Here in Alberta, we're fortunate enough to have many landscapes, perhaps none as mesmerizing though as the one here at Dinosaur Provincial Park in southern Alberta. So not only are we going outdoors, but we're going back in time. Let's go. Welcome to Dinosaur Provincial Park. My name is Marie. I'm going to be your guide today for the guided excavation program. Our excavation tour begins here at the visitor center. Here you'll find hands-on displays for kids of all ages. It's a great place to learn about the dinosaurs that roamed through the Badlands. Most of the bones that we're finding are from the same kind of dinosaur. It's a ceratopsian dinosaur called Centrosaurus apertus. It's one of the most common ceratopsians around here. This isn't exactly the Centrosaurus apertus, but it's a similar looking relative. And luckily, both were plant eaters. They have a very long nasal horn, hence the name Centrosaurus in the center of the face. Well, now we know who we're looking for, so off we go to hunt for dinosaur bones. 75 million years ago, the climate here was subtropical with lush forests and rivers that flowed east into a large inland sea. The kind of work that we're going to be doing today has some dangers to it. There's going to be potentially some rattlesnakes that we might encounter. Uh, if we do, they give us a good warning and uh, we just step away. It's not a big deal. Luckily, Marie went on to say that they haven't seen many rattlers this year. Oh, and one other thing, there's lots of cactus here, so a girl's got to be careful when she's using the outdoor facilities, if you know what I mean. So we have a large uh, limb bone, probably a leg bone, either from a hadrosaur or from a ceratopsian. When dinosaur bones are exposed to the elements, they decompose rather quickly. You can see here kind of in cross sections, it's just a part of it, like the whole bone would be about this big around. You got your surface and it's denser, closer to the surface, and then it's porous in the middle where the marrow was. Dinosaur bones here are chocolate brown when they are in the ground. But when they're exposed to the sun, then they bleach and then they turn kind of cream color like this. Also, they're very heavy. So if you take this in your hands, you'll, it's just as heavy as a rock would be. So how did all the dinosaur bones found here all end up in the same place? 75 million years ago, this area was very flat. Large storms from the inland sea flooded the area with water. The dinosaurs are trapped in water. They have to swim, but they can only swim for so long. So they end up drowning. And as the water recedes, you have these pools of water and pools of carcasses. This sounds very romantic, doesn't it? That's how a bone bed is formed, and that's what we will be digging in today. This is an active quarry. Paleontologists are currently conducting research here, so we have to be careful to watch our step. Most of us, what we're going to use is an all and a polyester brush. Because we're working really slowly, we don't want to be all chisel happy, like I mentioned earlier, with the hammer and chisel and go too fast. Because if we go too fast, we miss things, we break things, we move things out of place. One by one, Marie shows us our personal digging area. I would like you to work on this vertebra. So what I would like you to do is slowly take this here down. You, can you see the outline of the bone right here? Yeah. In a large bone bed like this, bones get scrambled up. Chances of finding the full skeletal remains of a dinosaur in one place are rare. Bones from one dinosaur could be scattered over meters, even kilometers. It's so nerve wracking to do this because I feel like <laughs> Anything I sweep or pick up could be a potential dinosaur bone or a fossil. Not long into my excavation, I make an exciting discovery. That's not mud. <gasps> All right, so this here is another bone right here. <laughs> Just an inch away from the already exposed vertebrae on the left sits another bone. This, you can tell that it's bone because it's nice and elongated and you can feel the nice texture. When you expose a fossil, you're the first human being to ever see it. And I mean, it's been in the ground for 75 million years. This is a, a horn, either an uh, orbital horn or nasal horn. This is really awesome. This is the first uh, adult horn that's actually coming out of this section of the quarry. Everybody gets really excited and everybody's eyes get, you know, big and round when they see the concentration of fossil that we're dealing with here. Pretty much everyone as a child, if they'd heard a dinosaur, it's like, I want to do that one day. You know, not necessarily be a paleontologist, but I want to dig up dinosaur bones. And they go on the website or they hear about it and they're like, hey, I can do this. I can actually do it. I don't have to be a paleontologist and go to university for years and years in order to be able to, to dig up dinosaur bones. All this digging is tough on a city girl's hands. 
I wonder if there's a manicurist down in the campground. Sandpaper hands, I call them. I like to use a lot of cream, but uh, yeah, for the summer, I just can't have pretty hands. Once the dinosaur bone is completely cleared off, Marie adds a consolidant to preserve it. See the difference it makes in the color? It really highlights it, and then it's a lot easier to see. And this, at the same time, it'll protect it a little bit more from the elements. So it's making the whole bone stronger. Before we break for lunch, Marie shows us how they remove a bone. A cheesecloth-like material called gypsona is put over the bone, moistened with water, and allowed to dry for a few hours. There's lots of stuff everywhere. This is a scapula, shoulder blade. What does that look like? Wood, you bet. So that's petrified wood. Looks like somebody was just chopping wood here, but this is actually petrified wood. So yeah, good luck starting a fire with that. <laughs> this is a crocodile tooth, tip missing again. In the afternoon, Marie takes us prospecting for microvertebrates, very, very tiny bones. Being in our own backyard, it's easy to take for granted how special the site is. Tourists from all over the world love coming here. I get teenagers. I take people from 14 years old and up. I had an 80-year-old participant uh, last year that did fantastic and actually found quite a few fossils. All kinds of people, but everyone normally is, is blown away by, by the experience. It amazes me how Marie can immediately identify small fragments. This is turtle shell carap uh, carapace fragment, uh, ironstone, this is a gar scale. <laughs> Time to go back to the quarry and check that cast we left earlier. Just want to make sure that the whole thing comes loose. The fossil is delicately taken out of the ground and dirt underneath is removed. Wow, the day flew by. It's time to pack up. Really cool find. Yeah, <laughs> just standing over it looking all proud. What a great day. If you want to find out more about the guided excavation program at Dinosaur Provincial Park, go to albertaparks.ca. Now, I'm off to find that manicurist. <laughs>